Hey guys, welcome back. First of all, uh, Jim from Beer to You here. Welcome uh, to 2019. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope uh, this finds you doing well and uh, New Year's, new beers. So back from uh, my sojourn to the United States to go visit family, being an international man of mystery, <laughs> I was able to bring some stuff back that uh, I don't have access to where I'm at here at uh, World Headquarters. So uh, Western Washington, where I'm from, where I live, is uh, a fairly good mecca of beers. So we brought back a little selection to uh, take a look at. So today, the first one we're gonna look at here is the Fremont Dark Star. So Fremont Brewing is uh, a Seattle brewery. Um, kind of cool, kind of medium, medium big in the Northwest. Uh, been around for about 10 years and they make some really, uh, really quality beers. So uh, this is one of their year round offerings, the Dark Star. Um, it is an Imperial Oatmeal Stout. So we haven't talked about an oatmeal stout yet. So what is that? Well, it's a, a stout that the brewer, in addition to the grains that they normally mash, um, you can check out my award-winning video about how beer is made in five minutes or less for details, plug, plug. Um, in the mash, they add uh, flaked oats in this case. And what does that do? Um, really, it gives it a creamier mouthfeel and sweeter. So uh, not quite as dry as the dry stout. The most famous dry stout of all an Irish stout is Ding 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 Guinness, exactly. So this guy's not that. This guy is a little bit sweeter. Imperial, which guess what Imperial means? Code word for higher alcohol content. So in this case, this guy is gonna be 8% ABV and uh, also 50 IBUs. But like I said before, kind of disclaimer on uh, hops, or IBUs, it's just a measure of how much bittering potential a hop has that the brewer's adding. It doesn't necessarily mean a bitter beer. You can have, with the brewer, with a light pale ale or something, you can have a 40 or 50 IBU beer that tastes pretty bitter to the, to the tongue, whereas you can have a much sweeter imperial ale, like or a, a porter, a stout, something like this, where you have a pretty high-ish IBU and you don't taste it because it's canceling out the the inherent sweetness of the beer. So, the more you know. So, cool can art, got a big old uh, dragon on it. Um, because beer matters, which I really dig their logo because it kind of does. And uh, they're from Seattle Earth, in case you're wondering where they are. So, let's get this bad boy into the glass and see what we're dealing with. Dun, 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 dun. So this comes in uh, 12 ounce cans, uh, 22 ounce bottles, and uh, also on draft. We'll talk about that a little bit. So terrible pouring technique by yours truly, but that does unleash a really, really cool coffee colored, think coffee with milk and sugar colored head, as well as just a black, dark, dark, dark beer. Maybe the slightest tinge of reddishness to it, but that's only if you're holding it up to a bright light like I have shining on my face right now. Otherwise, this is black, light does not pass through it, you know, the singularity of a black hole dark kind of beer. So, definitely cool, definitely something, a winter vibe, a dark beer. So let's get a nose on this guy. Mmm, so, first note that hits you is roast, like roast coffee. Think. Cracking open a bag of dark, uh, darkly roasted whole bean coffee, you get that. Then a little bit of kind of malty sweetness. And maybe just a hint of hop aroma, but I can't really break it out on the nose. Really that roasty coffee is kind of the big, uh, the big maybe just a titch of kind of a burnt toast almost smell, in a good way. Cool, so let's get this, uh, let's get a taste on this guy. Excited, cheers. Mm. So right away, you definitely can tell the difference of not of the oatmeal stout versus kind of a dry Irish stout. There's a very creamy mouthfeel. It, it lingers, the aftertaste lingers for seemingly hours. Definitely dark roast, getting coffee, getting espresso notes on there. Maybe a little bit of dark, like a dark chocolate background there. A little dark chocolate on the background, really, really complex. So uh, from my research, what I can find, they didn't use any like chocolate or coffee like some of the other stouts I've talked about do. 
all of this is coming from the malt bill. And the nice thing about Fremont is they are completely open and honest, honest brokers of what they're doing. So if you want to check out what's in there, they will give you all the beer nerding ingredients there. They'll tell you the entire malt bill, so all the grains that are in the beer, and too many to list, but enough to get some specialty colors and darkness into it. As well, they also will tell you that this has got some Willamette and Magnum hops. Not getting hop, hoppy bitterness, just a little bit of that astringent coffee bitterness that you're getting from the dark roast, kind of more of a dark roasty bitter than a, a hop bitter, if that makes sense. Real nice beer though. Eight-ish, 8%, so high-ish alcohol, but not going down tremendously harshly. This one definitely, this one will uh, sneak up on you. So they come in six packs, but this is not something you're gonna crush watching the game, because it will crush you. But uh, really, just really delightful beer. So uh, Untapped has it on at uh, four out of five, which is pretty high for Untapped, and about 24,000 ratings. So digging in a little bit, I was able to find out that uh, the uh, Fremont website, which I'm gonna link to below, some of the medium sized breweries will do this, has a map. So we can you can go on the Find Our Beer link and it, see where it's available. Off the top of my head, Fremont is Pacific Northwest plus Colorado, um, Southern California, Alaska, and Japan. So you have that going for you, plus the you know, kind of traditional packed Northwest states. So pretty, uh, pretty reachable. So what I give this guy, I like it. It's roasty, it's coffee, it's dark, and I always love it when brewers are good enough at their job that they can get coffee flavors or chocolate flavors without adding coffee and chocolate just by manipulating the grains. I really like that. This guy's a nine out of 10 for me. I really like it. It's the right beer at the right time, the right time of year. So it's a good, uh, a good look. So uh, I think that's about it. Once again, happy new year uh, team. Um, hopefully you're coming in. Really be thankful if you'd uh, smash that like button for me, uh, let you know you like what's going on here and uh, please subscribe. Helps people find the channel and doesn't cost you anything. Let you know we have uh, fresh beer reviews coming. So more to follow, got some good stuff, but I think that's it for now. So uh, until next time, beer nerds of the world unite and we're always gonna keep looking out for the good stuff. Cheers.